Hello and welcome back to Eye on Iowa. I'm Sarah Mueller, a reporter with Forbes, and today I am joined by New Hampshire Senate, State Senator Regina Birdsell. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it on this wonderful Monday morning. We have a lot to get into because you have endorsed Governor Ron DeSantis for the GOP ticket. Just to get started, will you tell me a little bit about what went into that decision for you? Sure. Um, it really wasn't a real hard decision. Uh, knowing, well, first of all, my sister's from Florida, so I keep an eye on everything that happens in Florida. And I've been watching Governor DeSantis over the fat past few years, and I absolutely love the way he handled Florida during the lockdown, which was very similar to how New Hampshire handled it, but a little bit um, stronger. So as I started learning more about him, one of the things that um, people don't know about me is I'm a veteran. I was in the United States Coast Guard for 10 years. My sister was in the Army. She's retired Army Lieutenant Colonel. My brother-in-law's a uh, retired Colonel. And my father was a retired Lieutenant Colonel, served in Korea and World War II. So as I started learning about him, I saw that he was a combat, he was a veteran in the Navy, served in um Iran and, or I'm sorry, Iraq and Afghanistan um, uh, counseled Navy SEALs on their um, their procedures. And I really liked what I saw as a veteran and seeing what's happening going on in the world. I know that he has seen combat. He would be the first president that has served in combat since um, H.W. Bush. And I think right now with what's going on in the world, it's, for me, he's our best choice. I'm based out of Iowa and our governor, Kim Reynolds, has just also endorsed him. Now he is in the polls pretty high up, but he's bookend by uh, Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. Is there a reason why maybe you weren't swayed to one of those candidates? Um, well, just to let you know, even in 2016, I actually endorsed Marco Rubio. Um, so. If anyone was going to steer me their, their way, it would be Nikki Haley. Obviously, my dream team would be Governor DeSantis, President, and Nikki Haley, Vice President. So, um, but I just like what Governor DeSantis has done, his um, his background, his uh, his experience in leadership, what he's done in the crisis in, uh, in hurricanes down in um, Florida. I feel he is better equipped with what he's been through between the war and the uh, um, problems down in Florida. I think he would be much better suited to be president. Now, we've had a couple of people kind of flip flop, endorse one candidate and then go forth and endorse a different candidate later. I'm asking everybody, would there be a circumstance in which you would change your endorsement? I'm pretty loyal. Very loyal. And of course, New Hampshire is coming right after Iowa on the heels of Iowa. You know, we're seeing a lot of ground game here. A lot of candidates doing events in coffee shops, doing events in diners, you know, rallies, whatnot. What are you seeing in New Hampshire? I am seeing Governor DeSantis is hitting a lot of small venues a lot. And he's actually starting to bring in some pretty good crowds, obviously not 10,000, but in New Hampshire, you don't want that. You want to be able to do house parties. You want to be able to do small venues uh, because people do literally see their can see candidates four and five times. And where we take New Hampshire takes first in the first in the nation primary seriously. As a matter of fact, Wednesday is a press conference or a press release with the um, Secretary of State and announcing our first in the primary date. I, I got to also know, you know, there's there's a lot going on with Donald Trump right now with his trials, with his testimonies, with a lot of questions around, well, if he were to be the nominee and face off against Biden, what would be different than 2020? Um, and so how do you think Ron DeSantis steps up differently than somebody like Donald Trump? Well, again, I think Governor DeSantis has had a lot of um, crisis that he's had to deal with in Florida. And I, I think that um, that um, sets him apart from uh, former President Trump. 
the fact that he has had so much going on in his life between Iraq, Afghanistan, having to work to get uh, work through his own um, uh, education. I think that really uh, puts him in a league uh, separate. And I, I think um, it for me, it puts him on um, a higher step right now. But there's still quite a bit of a gap. I mean, I even think about the Iowa poll that came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, there was almost a 20 percent difference between the candidates. How do, how do you think he needs to catch up to Trump, whether that's his ground game or what he's doing online or on TV ads? What do you think he needs to do to catch up? I, I do think um, the ground game is important. And I think he's he started. I've seen it um, being stepped up in New Hampshire. He's. Um, He's uh, he came he um, a couple of weeks ago. He set, spent the whole day with Governor Sununu um, in different venues, hitting the um, I believe it's the Red Arrow Diner. Um, I've worked walked with him through in Derry, it which is one of my towns, um, Marianne's Diner. So he's stepping up his game as far as being able to um, on the ground. Um, I can't tell what he's I my understanding is he's pretty much hit all 99 counties in Iowa. And I think that's really important. Um, it's one thing to fly in and have a big, um, big event and then fly back out. But when you're hitting ni all 99 counties, I think that's really important to really get the heartbeat of the, the states that you're in. Yeah, I think a lot of people have seen that the campaign tactics between somebody like Donald Trump, who draws bigger crowds, obviously, and has to host rallies is obviously different than somebody like uh, DeSantis, who can maybe hit those diners without uh, flooding the place. I was at the Iowa State Fair and um, Trump was supposed to be at one of the restaurants on, on the fairgrounds and it was mass chaos of people just flooding the area. Um, so I, I want to quick touch on moderates because that is the key to this next election, especially for the GOP. How do you think Ron DeSantis needs to appeal to those moderates in ways that other candidates maybe can't? I think in a sense, I watched the debate the other night, and in a sense, he's he's started doing that because, believe it or not, his stance on, let's say, the abortion issue is very similar to Nikki Haley's, where you know, you need to leave it up to the states. There's no way that either Democrats or Republicans are going to get 60 senators to make a, a change across the nation. So his thought process is leave it to the states. You know, we know in New Hampshire, we know what our limit is. It was 24 weeks. Uh, do some of us want it lower? Absolutely. But it was a state decision. That's where we are. Uh, Florida, um, the state legislature is um, knows what their people want. So he's starting to manage his message in, in that sense, as far as I'm concerned. You have mentioned that your dream ticket would be Nikki Haley with Ron DeSantis. Is there anybody else you think would be a good running mate for the governor? I hadn't really thought about it. I just saw that um, I, I think uh, Ron DeSantis has the the capability with his dealing with the crisis. Um, and so I think he could handle the the crisis that happens. Nikki Haley has, even though it's only two years at the at the United Nations, um, she has some really good foreign foreign um, experience. So I think the two of them would really make a good ticket. Sure, I'm sure there's a lot out there. I'm sure um, your governor um, would make a an amazing vice president. It's really up to the actually it's up to the candidate, not me. <laughs> We are here in Iowa. This whole show is focused on Iowa, but our eyes are set on New Hampshire next. What do you think people uh, outside of New Hampshire should know about the upcoming primaries and what, what's coming up for you guys? Um, well, we don't know yet because we don't know what the date's going to be. Uh, we'll, know on two, we'll know on Wednesday, but um, it's going to be, um, it's going to be busy. Um, there are, Usually, it, do you mean um, legislative wise or do you mean? I think one thing we talk about a lot here in Iowa is how we vet the candidates for the caucuses, right? Um, and so what we look for in the candidates when they're going to these coffee shops and whatnot, what do you feel like is maybe different in New Hampshire, what your residents are doing to vet? The 
Oh, <clears throat> like I said, uh, they, many of these town halls, you'll see the same people there four or five times. They will um, ask the same question, but word it differently to see if they get the same answer. Um, the coffee shops, when I walked the governor through Marianne's Diner and Dairy, I literally, I've walked U.S. Senator candidates through, I've walked governors through, I've never seen such a positive outlook with uh, Governor DeSantis. So, and they like to sit there and they like to talk to him. And I think that's a, that's what, uh, what my constituents are looking for, someone who will take the time to talk with them. And he does. And got to remember that New Hampshire has a high population of veterans. So they really have a lot of respect for Governor DeSantis. And I think he should personally, and I've told him this, I think he needs. I mean, almost every email I receive from his campaign has some mention of his veteran status and his service. Um, so I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about it. And I'm excited to hear the announcement coming out of New Hampshire later. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you so much.